I hate that this is happening so much in the world, but I swear, I feel like I'm hearing people as they age, you almost hear about everyone becoming pre-diabetic or diabetic. I feel like I hear a lot of people suffer for them from that. And when I'm reading success stories on Dr. Furman online, I notice a lot of them talk about being pre-diabetic, becoming diabetic, and realizing they needed to make a change in their life. Right. Um, pre-diabetes and diabetes are exploding, but the number of people becoming pre-diabetic, which means that their sugars have already started to rise out of the normal range, but not yet high enough to be formally classified as being a diabetic. So they've already have now a problem with sugar and insulin. So it's like the sugar that we eat. So the sugar that's going in our blood from the foods we eat? Yes. In other words, when we eat carbohydrate, it gets broken down into a sugar that goes into our bloodstream that fuels us. Our body is fueled by sugar. Like sitting here discussing things with you, 80% of our energy requirements are being utilized by the brain, and the brain they could only run on sugar. So mm -hmm. our body runs on sugar. That's mm -hmm. the primary gasoline for humans. Mm -hmm. But when we start to but when we eat fruit foods like cooked carbohydrate foods, like sweet potato, squash, you know, cauliflower, whatever we're eating, beans, our body fruits, our body makes sugar. If those carbohydrates are broken down to simple sugars to fuel our cells and to fuel our brain. You know, it's funny as I was just talking with Jacob about this at lunch, because um, he was asking about rice. He's like, mm -hmm. I feel like I know your dad says bread's really bad, like the wetter the bread, the sooner you're dead. But I never hear him talk bad about rice. And I said, no, it's all the same thing. He calls white rice, bread, everything, the cake diet. It's like eating cake, which is sugar, 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 sugar. So this is like, this is sugar that doesn't really fuel our body in a good way, right? That's correct, because those um, white rice and white potato are have had the fiber, I'm sorry, white rice and white bread, I meant to say, right. have the fiber removed. And the sugar that's, is, the fiber slows the entry of sugar into the bloodstream. Wait, that's something I didn't know. You're saying white rice and white bread have the fiber removed. That outside grain also contains all the fiber. That's correct. And it makes it more processed, right? Right. It's That's white flour is the um, germ, the inside of the seed without the outside which is where the fiber is so you're taking the fiber away and when you took the fiber away it's the the sugar portion breaks down too rapidly and the sugar goes into your blood too quickly so that's the rate at which sugar enters the blood is called the glycemic load of that food and so that's why sugar and honey and maple syrup have a high glycemic load because when you eat it it goes into your bloodstream right away and that's why white flour has almost the equivalent glycemic load is plain, plain ordinary sugar or honey because it goes into the bloodstream immediately because there's no fiber to ease its entry into the bloodstream more slowly. Which is why you call it the cake diet. Right, which is why it's the cake diet because everything people eat is the same as cake. Mm -hmm. they, they fry cake, it's a pancake. It's fried cake in a pan or they put, and they put sugar on the cake. Well, it's just the craziest thing. And they're eating bread and pasta and white flour products which are just eating sugar, sugar, and more sugar. Now, so the American diet is particularly layered on top to make people diabetic, to do all the things. Because number one, they're eating a lot of high glycemic carbohydrates with a high load of flushing into the bloodstream with a rapid intake of sugar. And that rapid intake of sugar in the bloodstream, because going in so fast, has an effect on brain, on the brain, to make you crave and desire more sweets. So it makes you into a sugar addict. So you want more, you want to eat more calories now. And then the American diet, is also high in saturated fat because they eat animal products and sweets like hamburgers, pizza, right? And the, the animal products and the saturated fat from animal products further distorts the function of the insulin receptor to damage it. So now you don't have the receptor where insulin can bind to it on the cells doesn't work very well. See, insulin is the hormone produced by the pancreas that lowers sugar in the bloodstream. And it lowers sugar in the bloodstream by pushing it into the cells, the muscle cells, the brain cells, it pushes it out of the bloodstream into the cells. And when we gain weight, then we become more, and we have more fat on the body, it interferes with the function of the insulin receptor so that the body has to produce extra insulin. And the production of extra insulin is a risk factor for both heart disease and cancer in a shortened lifespan. In, insulin is a primary fat storage hormone and higher levels make you have more appetite and higher levels promote more fat storage and make you hungrier because insulin is a primary fat storage hormone which produces angiogenesis, which means it grows, the, it, it promotes the growth of blood vessels 
to fuel the growth of fat, because fat can't grow without blood vessels growing into it to allow it to get oxygen and nutrients. But in allowing blood vessels to grow into the fat to get fatter, it can allow tumors to replicate and even metastasize and allow cancer cells to glean a blood supply. So the things that make us have higher levels of insulin are also cancer promoting. So sugar is therefore cancer promoting because it raises insulin higher. Now we have um, this population who's overweight and all overweight people are insulin resistant. So I'm saying there's no such thing as a healthy overweight person. They all have higher levels of insulin and it's higher and higher the more extra fat they put on their body. So they have high, higher levels of insulin, but what makes them insulin resistant? I just wanna make sure I understand that term. The fat that gets stored in the cell membranes um, distort the shape and function of the insulin receptor. So they become insulin receptors from the buildup of fat on the membrane of the cells. But when you eat saturated fats from animal products, it has an extra um, negative effect on the shape of the insulin receptors, oh, okay. making, and decreasing the function of the insulin receptor further. So just gaining weight makes you insulin resistant. But when you gain weight and eat animal fats, it makes it even worse. So let me get this right. You're producing all this extra insulin because you're not eating well and you have all the, you know, a lot of sugar. And so they're like, whoa, we need to regulate this sugar better. So more insulin. But then also you're distorting your insulin receptors. So you're really messing up the process. And so controlling blood sugar in your body becomes a real problem. Is that right? Yeah. Well, if you're before you're pre diabetic, the body's, your sugars are normal, but the body's producing excess insulin in mm -hmm. order to keep the sugars normal. Now, to me, that's pre-diabetic, even before the sugars start to go up. So I'm saying all overweight people are pre-diabetic right. because they're in an abnormal state with heightened insulin, even before their sugars start to rise. Yeah. When their sugars start to rise into the pre-diabetic phase, like your sugars are like 90, 95, 100, I'm saying, to me, everybody calls it pre-diabetes. I call it diabetes mm -hmm. because I'm calling pre-diabetes before your sugar starts. I have my own criteria. Totally. You, know, you want people to once you're really diabetic, healthy. that's already advanced diabetes to me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because you're saying, I mean, you always advocate if you're not healthy, you got to you got to work on that. You got to get it there. You got to make changes. Right. So it's not like it's like once the scale starts teetering, you're like, let's make a change, not wait till you're over this terrible threshold. Once the sugar is abnormal in the blood, mm -hmm. called pre-diabetes. You've been having excess insulin for a decade. Right. That's been causing damage, and the right. damage has been going on for years before you've been diagnosed with pre-diabetes, let alone diabetes. Totally. 